This is a Furk Red Master's Choice. This is an incredible guitar. Two weeks ago, I went to Nashville and I got to tour uh, the Furk uh, North American headquarters. I got to meet Mark. He's amazing and it was so fun. He showed me around. I got to play a ton of guitars. Now, while I was there, I got to pick a guitar that got to come home with me so that I could do a demo. This is the guitar that I picked and I hope you can completely understand why this would be the one that I picked. There's a part in that video where I play this guitar and I just say, it is so, so, so good. And I could not help it. When I turned around and looked at all the guitars I'd played, there were two guitars that stuck out to me. This was one and the other was the yellow, which was a cedar top, rosewood back and sides. But this with the abalone, with the koa binding, with everything about this guitar, it just felt like it needed to come home with me. So if you don't know Furk guitars, they are made in the Czech Republic. Under a communist government, it is illegal to own a business. And so, uh, because they couldn't find any guitars, the Furk family started building their own guitars. And these guitars seemingly were really good. And so from a basement, from, you know, kind of behind closed doors, uh, these guitars started being built. Uh, in 2021 was their 40th anniversary. When the USSR fell, it launched into a wonderful guitar brand and they are very common in Europe. They are not as much uh, distributed in the US just since 2019 have they, have they had distribution. I mean, conservatively, I have been asked 2000 times if I've played a FERC guitar and I had not until about two weeks ago, and now I have played this guitar, I mean, just as much as I could. I played this over Christmas. This was the guitar with my family that I played Christmas carols and we sang, and I'll even put a little clip in here of that. Now remember, guitars are a physics system. This is the Red series. So if you're not aware with the uh, how they line up their guitars uh, from FERC, they follow the visible light spectrum. And so they start with uh, green, blue, indigo, violet, uh, yellow moving all the way up into red. Red being their top of the line and then there's one uh, model line above this which is called the Rainbow Series. Now in addition to all of the color series, they also have vintage models. So if you want a very vintage feeling guitar, I did play a couple of those. The thing that I find most compelling about the Furk brand is that they ascribe to a philosophy that I dearly appreciate and I want to see more builders lean into, they believe that the best guitars are still out there. So there is amazing innovation and new design, new thought into how this guitar is made. One of the innovations that I think is so incredible is the CNR system in the neck. Now, all acoustic guitars have to have a relationship to transfer energy from the neck into the body. Now, the other component is to make sure that these guitars continue to be playable. So the CNR system is a carbon rod with a dual action truss rod inside and then it anchors it deeper into the neck. Now, these guitars are bolt-on necks and I and even the way I say that, I can feel uh, the conditioning that I've had in the guitar world to say, well, dovetail joints are good and bolt-on necks are okay. I think that bolt-on necks, some of the most important and valuable guitars to me, my Huss and Dalton, my Paget, they are both bolt-on necks. And so with this, it's a really great way to transfer energy and to keep a guitar super playable. Basically, it's a dual action truss rod within a carbon rod, and then all of that is anchored deep into the heel of the guitar. And it makes for a guitar that does not freak out in the ways that most acoustic guitars tend to freak out. If you know acoustic guitars, you know that guitars freak out four times. First winter, first summer, second winter, second summer, they're going to get buzzy and change around. What's really amazing, uh, and what I have seen, is that these guitars don't freak out in the same way because they're able to handle that relationship between metal and wood and carbon fiber and steel. And so they've been able to navigate it much more gracefully. So the uh, the CNR is an incredible system. And uh, I mean, to me, that's a huge game changer in innovation. And I love the idea that the best guitars are yet to come.
If you're new to the channel, make sure you're subscribed. I want to run this through a three question gear review. That is the tool by which I use to help understand more clearly what is good about a guitar, what's bad about a guitar, and if you're in the market, if you're if this guitar should be on your radar. First, what is good about this guitar? Now this guitar is amazing. This is a very modern style, finger style guitar. It has a 25, it's a, it's a little longer than 25 and a half inch scale length. I'll put the exact scale length in here. It feels incredibly comfortable. It has an inch and three quarter nut width. I love the gradient of this red on the top. I love this bright iridescent abalone along it. it has a Sitka spruce top. East Indian rosewood back and sides, mahogany neck, koa binding around the whole guitar. There's also, there are immaculate precision details. If there was one word that I would describe this guitar as, it is precise. Everywhere you look on this guitar, there's another detail that you just want to stop and look at. The fretwork is incredible incredible fretwork. The fingerboards are very comfortable. They feel rounded over. You don't feel the fret ends at all on this guitar. The other thing is the dots. They're these beautiful kind of rounded pill shaped uh, inlays. That's the detail that really convinced me that this was the guitar I wanted to spend more time with. I love how articulate uh, this inlay work is on the headstock. On the back of the headstock there are Goto 510 tuners in nickel which Hamana Hamana, these are incredible. Every detail on here has been thought through and meticulously put together. Now there is a pickup in this guitar, and we'll talk about this pickup. It is the LR Bag Stage Pro. Now this is the Anthem, and so the Anthem has two active element or two active sources. You have a microphone on the underside of the saddle, and then you also have a transducer underneath the saddle itself. Because it's here on the side, that means the battery pack is accessible here. Now also, I typically, I don't like, and I'll talk about this, I don't like having a hole in the side of a guitar. I would rather have stuff in the sound hole, but there are two benefits that I see to this. Three, there's like five benefits. Let's go through them. Number one, the battery's here. The battery's not inside, which means I don't have to take the strings off to take the battery uh, if I'm at a show, if I'm playing at church or whatever, and the battery starts crackling and dying. I can swap the battery without having to take the strings down. That's an amazing benefit. Another one is that you have more control in here. There's a tuner built into this. There's also a full blend. So if you know the Anthem FL, you have a fixed blend. You don't get to tweak and mix between the microphone and the pickup. With this, you have the full blend. So this is basically the same control level as the incredibly expensive, but totally worth it, uh, full-blown Anthem from LR Bags. The last thing you have is a phase. So between phase, EQ, blend, tuner, battery accessible outside, there's so much going for this. There's also the end pin here. One of the things I found as I've played this guitar so much is that it has a voice that lives really, really well in a mix. This is a perfect guitar if you are looking for a guitar-driven alternative band. If you're in a worship band, uh, it sits really well. Now, this is... I mean, most people that would look at this would probably think it's a Taylor, uh, especially in the U.S. because Taylors are so prevalent and Ferks are so uh, uncommon at this point. We're going to change that. We're going to get more Ferks into the world. Um, because they're really, really good. If you like Taylor, this is Taylor to a level that you have not experienced unless you were able to play one of the R Taylors maybe 10, 15 years ago. R Taylors, I don't think they're in production anymore. It was kind of Bob Taylor's boutique spinoff from Taylor Guitars. But uh, this, if you like a Taylor, this is infinitely better. Guitars, remember, I said this before and I'll say it again, guitars are a physics system. They are a constant relationship between a soft top, rigid back and sides, and a resonant body built together to uh, take the energy from your hands and shoot it out of the sound hole into the ears of people that are listening. And this guitar seems to capture the energy coming from you really well. There's no energy that feels wasted. I like how lively the back feels. I can feel it against my ribs and against my belly as I'm playing. Uh, I like how much I can feel in my arm uh, as my arm is wrapped around the guitar. The energy transfer seems uh, to be very high in this guitar. It is precise. So I have many, many good things to say about this guitar. I only have a couple things that I would say that I don't actually enjoy.
it's still going. So let's shift gears into what's bad about this guitar. And I use bad rare, very loosely. Um, there are two things on this guitar that I would change um, and just preference. Some of them are preference. Yeah, no, they're both preference. So the two things that I would change on this guitar, number one, there's a tusk saddle um, and it's very sharp. And so what I find is, as I'm, and it even hurt just doing that, as I find myself playing particularly palm muted stuff, I find myself hitting right here on this top corner. So if it were me, I would want this guitar to feel a little more boutique and hand built. This guitar feels like a fact, it feels like an incredibly well built factory guitar. It feels like it is tooled and precise, um, but this thing, I wish that it was more rounded, more sculpted. The other one is I just don't like having a hole in the side of my guitar. Um, and I also, I, I'm fine, I can get around this, but I prefer to get a guitar that I love the sound of and then put a pickup in it. So I would prefer to have a sound hole, but the benefit I see to having it in the side, the sides, I mean, guitars are effectively built like drums. And so you have very rigid sides and then you want a tuned top and a tuned back. And so what I find myself being concerned about is adding too much mass to the top of a guitar. So I think that a guitar would sound better uh, with a pickup in the side rather than the top. So maybe my second thing isn't really a thing, but those are my two things that I would change on a guitar like this. If I were to order one, I would probably, I don't know, I'd probably do a different pickup. I probably, or do a different style of pickup so that I could get more control on the floor and not hanging on the top, but not a hole in the side. So I don't know, but those are my two things. Now, ultimately, this leads us to the third question, which is if you're in the market, should you buy one of these? These are incredible modern guitars. This guitar elicits the sound of a couple bands really particularly to me. Number one, they remind me of Need to Breathe, especially the, from the record, The Outsiders, the song Garden, and there are a couple songs. I'll put links in the description down below. This guitar nails that sound. The other artist that I think this guitar really sounds like is Phil Wickham. This is a similar shape to his, it's similar tone woods, and, uh, and I just think that this thing nails like modern acoustic guitar sounds, modern worship sounds. And so I think if you're in the market for that kind of guitar, this thing is incredible. I also think guitars are your best way as a musician to express who you are and what you value. If you value hard work, determination, and precision, how could you not love one of these guitars? Now, this is not a traditional guitar, and I think the person that would be looking for this guitar would not, this is not between like this or like a D18 or a triple O18. They're just different guitars and they have different audiences. So I think this guitar is for a finger style player, a modern player, someone that needs a ton of diversity in the tone that they get out, someone that wants to really be able to tweak and sit really well in a mix, this guitar is very capable. Um, precise and capable are the two words that I keep coming back to. I think that this guitar for what it is, is really incredible. Now there is one thing I haven't talked about and that is the hard case. Um, you have an option and most of the more expensive uh, of the Furk guitars come with Hiscox cases. Really great quality, great construction on the inside. They are very formed and padded. You can tell that your guitar is not going to move anywhere. Now the only thing I have against them as a finger style player that is always looking out for ways that I can break my <laughs> that I can break my fingernails, the latches on these, they're very tight and the way that they click open, I mean, it's, uh, it is triggering the stuff in my brain that says protect your right hand, do not break your fingernails on this. This is a great modern guitar. If you love the sound of modern acoustic guitars, the guitars that this reminds me the most of are the high-end Larivés, uh, high-end, some of the Breed Loves, um, the R Taylors, some of the Taylor 9 series. I mean, this is, if you like those guitars, you will like this better. Oh, anyway, thanks to Ferk for letting me borrow this guitar. And uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. Go fill the world with music and friendship. Mm -hmm.